Hello, everyone. This is the Dirt Bike Channel Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson. Today, I want to talk about jetting. I want to talk about carburetors. I want to talk about fuel. I want to talk about oil. I just want to go on a rant here. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be much of a rant. Hopefully, it doesn't come across as a rant, but I just wanted to kind of get a few things out there and kind of help maybe give a few people out there a little bit better idea of what's going on with uh, mixing with two strokes and jetting. I'm just going to be talking about jetting with two strokes in general here. A lot of these principles could apply to four strokes as well. Um, and so we can kind of look at this as a broad, a broad way. But I'm mostly just talking about jetting two strokes. It's the thing that I've had the most experience on. And I also want to mention that, hey, look, I'm not an expert here. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not like the guy who knows everything. I'm just an enthusiast, okay? Um, so your revolt, your results may vary. Uh, your mileage may vary on this. Um, but I am excited about this stuff, and I do kind of uh, live it and breathe it. And no, I don't own a suspension shop or a motor shop. I, I don't. Uh, I don't get paid to do this. I don't get paid to work on bikes and to figure things out for people, but it's something that I've got a little bit of experience on and I'm learning more and more all the time. In fact, here just recently in the last little bit, I have a 2021 uh, KTM 125 S or I mean 125 XC bike and I've played with three different carburetors on the bike just in the last little while and I'm still playing with them. And, and uh, it's funny because I'll get people that will say like, they'll hear just a little bit on a YouTube video and then they'll assume the bike is running crappy or the jetting is crappy or something. And it's like the sound of the bike is only part of the story. The other part of the story is the way that the bike is reacting to the power, to the throttle inputs. The other part of the story is the spark plug. All of these things, it's not just the way the bike sounds, especially through crappy like point of view mics. Um, but I, I digress on that. It's funny because whenever I'm recording these podcasts, I kind of go through my list of podcast topics. And if, by the way, if you got an idea for a podcast, uh, topic, send me an email. The best place, the best way to contact me is through email. I don't check a lot of the social media stuff like Instagram. I don't check Facebook. I don't check. So if you want to get a hold of me, the best way to do that is through my email, Kyle at dirtbikechannel.com. That's the best way to get me. And you can say, Hey, here's a podcast topic. You know, I think you should, um, consider doing and yeah, but anyway, I, so I kind of go through one of the topics that I constantly look through when I say, Hey, am I, am I going to report it, report it, record a podcast is kind of like mailbag answering mailbag stuff. Um, and if I get something where I've noticed that I'm noticing that I'm getting this a bunch, then a lot of times what I'll do in, you know, if I'm getting a, the same question or something, a bunch in my email, I'll do a YouTube video on it, or I'll do a podcast on it on this. In this case, this might be a, a YouTube, it might be a podcast that I upload to YouTube. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing here. The impetus for this is I get this type of an email quite often. Okay. So bear with me here. I, I just, I, this isn't by any one person. I just put it down. Um, I typed it out and said, okay, this is a, an email that I would normally, that I've gotten a lot. It would read something like this. Hey, I've got oil running down my silencer and I'm running my bike 32 to one. Does that mean I'm running too rich? <laughs> and I get that a lot. Like, let me, let me repeat that. And you think that, think about, think that through in your mind. I've got oil running down my silencer and I'm running my bike 32 to one. So I'm too rich, right? Well, yes, you're running too rich. If you've got oil running down your silencer out of the tailpipe and then pooling up and running down the silencer. Yes, you're too rich, but you're, <laughs> so you're right, but you're right for the wrong reason. You're not running too rich because you're running 32 to one oil. Okay. So you're too rich because you're running too much fuel. The 32 to one isn't the problem here. And we'll go into what 32 to one means in just a moment here. Um, here's another question I get. Hey, I jetted my bike and it still runs like crap. <laughs> I jetted my bike or I jetted my carburetor and it still runs like crap. Can you help? And so then I'll respond like, Hey, when you say you jetted your bike, can you give me more information? Tell me what bike it is. Tell me what altitude you're running at. Tell me what temperature you're running at. Uh, tell me what jets you have on the carburetor. What, what is your idle jet? What is your, um, needle? 
and what clip position is the needle on and what is your main jet that you have in the carburetor? And they, re- and they respond back and they say, well, I changed the main jet. I'm now running a 160. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay, well, you forgot to tell me. Or maybe they, maybe they tell me, hey, like I've got this bike. It's a 2016 KTM 300 and now I'm running a 160 jet. And I go, okay, but you didn't answer those other questions. The other questions that I had were, you know, what's your idle jet? And what is your needle and your needle clip position and your main and you only told me the main jet. And recently I've kind of I've kind of come up with something in my head. I'm just like, you know, I wish we could go back in time and rename these little orifices, these little jets in our carburetor carburetors. Because in carburetors, we typically have an idle jet, we have a needle jet or a needle. Um, and we have a main jet. Now, in some carburetors and some of the four-stroke carburetors, it's even more complex than that. But I'm just going to talk about the three main metering systems that we see in a lot of uh, typical dirt bike carburetors, which would be the idle circuit, the needle circuit, and then the main circuit. The problem is, I wish we could go back and rename it so it wasn't called the main jet or the main circuit. Because then what that implies is that this is the main one we need to change. And in reality, it totally isn't. It's not the main one that we need to change. It's not the circuit that your bike is running on for like the main, the more, the most amount of time. It's just what we, what someone deemed as the main jet. And so what that then does is it simplifies it down so much that people think all I need to do is jet my bike by changing the main jet. And that's, we want to dispel that today on this podcast. Um, So let's talk a little bit about fuel ratios versus fuel oil ratios versus fuel air ratios. And I've got, I created a pot, uh, I created an outline here. I'm just kind of going, kind of go through and talk and do some of the talking points. Um, apologize if I'm hot, I'm, I'm down in my basement and it's like cold in my basement. So I shut the door. I've got an electric heater under my, under my desk here. And then I'm wearing like a, uh, I'm wearing a hoodie here and I've, I get kind of warm sometimes. Sometimes I'm freezing cold and then I get talking. I get excited. It's like my body is generating heat and I get, I am, I'm, I'm warm now. So anyway, I might be, hopefully that isn't too distracting for you guys, me unzipping this jacket here. Um, and I might have to peel it off here in a little bit, but so let's talk about fuel ratios versus oil ratios, uh, fuel oil ratio versus fuel air ratio. And this kind of goes back to that first, uh, that first question, you know, that I got, which is, or that I outlined, which is, Hey, I've got oil running down my silencer and I'm running my bike 32 to one. Does that mean I'm too rich? So Let's separate the two things out. Let's talk about fuel oil ratios and let's talk about fuel air ratios. The fuel oil ratio is the amount of oil that you were, the amount of two stroke oil that you're mixing in your gas. Think about this is what's in your gas can, you know, because if you're running a two stroke bike, uh, at least unless it's a T, excuse me, a TPI bike now where it's oil injected or a, or a beta bike where it's oil injected, you're going to have a premix. You're going to be mixing some sort of oil, two stroke oil into your fuel. You'll dump that in. You use like a measuring cup or something, or maybe you've got like a uh, different, uh, different size fuel oil bottle that you can just jump in, dump in and put a specific amount of uh, fuel in. Uh, this is the fuel oil ratio. And it's very important and it does affect your jetting and you can actually change your change a little bit to do with your fuel air ratios just by changing fuel oil ratios. But I think that's a little bit above, above the level that we want to talk about today. I just want to talk about fuel oil, fuel oil ratios, picking a ratio there, and then we will, we'll work on tuning our bike on the fuel air ratio on the other side of that, just to kind of keep things simple. So I always, I kind of like to think of this as you know, um, thick, thin, and thinnest or something like this. Or or another way you can think about this is the more oil you put in the fuel, the thicker that fuel becomes. Now, I may be totally, you know, if you talk about the physics of this thing, um, maybe it doesn't hold up as much. But one thing I do know is that the more oil you put in your bike, or the more oil you put in that fuel, the bigger jets you would need to make it run, not fuel lean. So it's almost like, and I'm pretty sure that this is the case. The more oil you put in the fuel, the thicker, the more viscous that fuel becomes. And that will definitely affect our jetting on the other side. So what I suggest that we do is we just find an oil that we're comfortable with. 
Find a good quality oil, whether it's Motorex or whether it's Amsoil or whether it's Motul or whether it's uh, whatever it is. Um, you or Klotz, you know, you find an oil that you like. Maybe it's Yamalube. Maybe it's Honda lube or or whatever Honda's thing is. Find an oil that you like, a reputable oil. I like the semi-synthetics or or the synthetic oils. Find an oil that you like, that you can get, uh, that isn't, you know, going to break your bank, although a lot of the oils are pretty much the same, and then run it at that, run it at the viscosity that that manufacturer recommends. You could always go with just what your manual recommends, but if you, I'll tell you, give, give you a little secret. If you, if you have a Yamaha, they're going to require, they're going to tell you in the manual to use the Yama lube because that's the oil that they own. And they're going to tell you to run it at like 32 to one or 40 to one, because that's what that oil needs to be run at. It needs to be pretty thick. Think about it. If you're running 32 to one, let me just say it like this. If you're mixing your fuel your oil and your fuel at 32 to 1, that's a quite a bit of oil in there. That's, that's a lot of oil. If you were mixing at 50 to 1, and 50, 32 to 1 means there's 32 parts gas to every one part oil. That's pretty rich as far as oil goes. That's a pretty thick fuel. If you had a different manufacturer of oil that said you can run this thing and, and we'll give you complete coverage and good coverage at... Uh, say 50 to one, like Amsoil Dominator is a, is like a pretty much a 50 to one oil. Then you're gonna go. You're gonna have 50 parts gas to one part oil. If you run something more like an Amsoil Saber, where you can run 80 to one or 100 to one, that might mean that you're running 80 parts gas to one part oil. And I've done that a lot. I've got thousands and thousands of hours on fuel that is mixed with that amount of oil in there. And that works totally fine. But what I want to talk about here is you've got, if you go 32 to one, you're running really thick gas. If you're running 50 to one, you're running thinner gas. If you're running 80 to one, you're running like an even, even thin it's you're running less oil. So pick something that you're comfortable with. If it's Yamalube, it doesn't matter if you're going to run Yamalube in a Yamaha or a KTM. If you're going to run Yamalube, you're going to need to run a 32 to one. If you're going to run something like Amsoil Dominator, they recommend that you run that oil at 50 to 1, I think, 50, 55 to 1. If you're going to run something like Motorex Cross Power 2T, I believe they ask you and they recommend that you run that at 65 to 1. If you're going to run, say, uh, say like Amsoil Saber, you can run that 80 to 1 or 100 to 1. I don't care what you run. And we can tune your bike uh, accordingly based on wh- whichever oil you're going to use. So pick something. Pick an oil that you like and then mix it at that ratio for that oil. And then you can put it in your chainsaw. You can put it in your dirt bike. You can, that's what I do. I have one, I buy one uh, version of premix, one premix oil. I mix that in, you know, a couple different gas cans that I have here at the house. And I run it in my premix big bikes, like, you know, say uh, my, like my 125 XC or my, you know, uh, YZ250 or whatever it is. Or I run it in my kids' little 50 cc bikes. I run it in my kids' 65s, my kids' 85s. I run it in my, uh, I run it in my weed eater. And so I just have one. So I'm not using all these different things. And now I've got that. So that's my fuel to oil ratio. And for me, I'm typically running an 80 to one with the oil that I use. Okay. So pick something that works with you. If it's Amsoil Dominator, 50 to one, go for it. All right. Now. The fuel air ratio, and this is where it gets kind of complicated because now we're talking about two different things. We're talking about fuel oil ratio and fuel air ratio, and both of them could affect how the both of them do affect how the bike is how the bike runs. Which is why I just like to make it simple by saying let's pick one oil, let's pick one fuel oil ratio, and let's stick with that. And now we will tune our bike uh, to run well with that using in our carburetor with the fuel air ratio. Okay. So fuel air ratio, this is fine tuned inside of our carburetor using our jets and our needles. Okay. So let's go back to that question that we had at the beginning where the person would have said, Hey, I've got oil running down my silencer. It's running down my silencer and then it's dripping off the silencer and and like landing on my swing arm down there. And, and the person says, I'm running my bike 32 to one. I guess I'm running too rich, right? So maybe I should lean it out. Here's what would happen. Here's the interesting thing that would happen. So let's say that that person is running 32 to one with their gas and oil. And then they, and they've got all this oil running out of the tailpipe. And then they pop quiz for you. Then they quote, lean out their fuel, 
by putting less oil in there, and now they go up to 50 to 1. What's going to happen on that tailpipe? If I had, if I had the Jeopardy music, I, I don't know. If I had, no, that's that's not it. If I if I had if I had Jeopardy music here, I'd play the Jeopardy music. What's going to happen on that? If you already have oil coming out of that tailpipe, I got to turn the crickets off. If you already had, sorry, if you already had oil coming out of the tailpipe at, when you were mixing your fuel at thirty-two to one, and then you don't change anything in your carburetor, but you now start running your less oil in the fuel at 50 to one. Now what's going to happen? You, cause the, what you'd think is that that oil is going to go away cause I'm using less oil, but it's actually the exact opposite. This problem is going to get worse. Why is that? Because you are now running a thinner gas, more fuel will be able to come through that carburetor. More fuel will get through those jets and the fuel burns what you have running down your silencer is the unburnt oil. And because you will have more fuel and more oil going through the carburetor, your bike will actually be more fuel rich. I'm doing this in air quotes. It'll be more fuel rich. There will be less, there will be more unburnt oil filling up your power valve and going through your exhaust and going into your packing in your silencer and running out. So that's the funny part. And this is why jetting, I think one of the reasons why I think jetting confuses so many people is that person that thought their bike was too rich with oil, thought it was getting too much oil. Then they reduce some of the oil out of their gas and suddenly the problem has gotten worse and now maybe they're even fouling spark plugs and now their mind has blown is blown and they don't even know why. Well, I just kind of explained it there. If our oil become, if our gas becomes a thinner, less viscous substance, then those same little jets, more of that fuel and oil will be able to go through those same jets in our carburetor and suddenly now we're getting way too much. Now we're running fuel rich. And as a result of that, we're going to have more oil coming out of that silencer. So when the person says, I've got all this oil running down, I'm running 32 to run, I'm I'm going 32 to one. Am I too rich? I say, yes, you are too rich, but you're not going to solve this problem by reducing the amount of oil that you put in your fuel. That's actually going to exacerbate the problem, believe it or not. What we want to do is we want to restrict the amount of fuel coming into that bike in the carburetor in order to fix this. Because presumably you're sticking with one type of oil and you want to continue to run 32 to one. I, I, I'd probably say, let's switch you to a different oil. So you don't have to run 32 to one because you're just putting a ton of oil out there. I don't think unless you're like super hard motocross racer, who's always pinned, I think 32 to one is probably too much oil. I would switch to an oil where you could be 50 to one or 65 to one. Um, and then Uh, we'll get that going. And then we're actually going to have to lean out your carburetor uh, quite a bit, because if we do lean you down to 65, if we lean your oil, uh, fuel oil ratio down to 65 to one, we're really going to have to lean your carburetor. So that's why, that's why I say, let's pick an oil and pick a ratio, stick with that. And now we're going to tune the carburetor. Okay. So here's, here's what I, here's what we need to say about tuning our carburetors and, and, and getting them to run right. Um, what we are tuning for is denser air. We're tuning for density altitude. So we want to control the amount of air that is mixed in, or I shouldn't say, we want to control the amount of fuel that is mixed in with the air. We don't have a control. We don't have a control over the amount of air. The, the air uh, pressure that we have will be dictated by the altitude and it'll be dictated by the temperature that we're at. Really, we're we're, con- we're correcting our fuel uh, for density altitude. So a lot of you guys, some of you guys might know that I, in a previous life, I was a pilot. I was studying to become a commercial aviator. I might even, I wanted to be a, a fighter pilot in the military. Um, that didn't work out. And then I was going to maybe do military air force. And then it was just, you know, commercial airlines or whatever. So I've done a lot of aviation study. In fact, I even, even I'm even studying this week to retake my drone uh, recurrency because I'm a part uh, CFR 14 part 107 uh, certified commercial drone pilot uh, to do dirt bike channel and I'm I'm uh, redoing my currency for that doing a recurrent test for that so density altitude in in aviation they say density altitude I'm just going to read this density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature uh, but here's what you need to know because this applies to us in dirt bikes as temperature and altitude increase, air density decreases. 
So in a sense, it's the altitude at which an airplane feels it's flying. Okay, we don't need to know that. But what we do, what we do need to know, there, there was a little key in there, a little key. Air pressure is reduced at higher elevations. So as your bike goes up in elevation, you, you become fuel rich because there's less air. Same thing happens when our when we go up in temperature. As the temp, uh, the temperature affects our carburetors. As the temperature goes up, the air becomes less dense. Therefore, we become fuel rich. And this really makes a lot of sense because let's say you're you know let's say you tuned your bike for running at sea level, and so you're having to put a bunch of fuel in there because it's got a bunch of air. You've got to balance those two things, right? Then let's say you come a mile high. You come to about where I live, live which is about a mile above sea level. And now the air is significantly less dense. You've experienced this. You've seen it on TV where they talk about athletes coming up to play at high altitude and, you know, and they're having to put the oxygen masks on, on the sideline or whatever on football games, or, you know, sometimes in basketball games or whatever, they're, they're just a little bit more tired. They don't have as much oxygen in their blood as they come up to altitude. Same thing happens here. Your bike is starving for oxygen as you increase in that altitude. But if you haven't changed anything in your carburetor, now suddenly the bike has way too much fuel. You think about it. It's got the same amount of fuel that you're putting in so that the fuel and air ratios were balanced at sea level. And now you have come up a mile, which means that your pressure, the air pressure, and the density of the air is much, much thinner up here a mile above sea level, but you're still putting in the same amount of fuel. So you're flooding the bike with fuel, AKA the bike is rich. And when we say rich, what we really mean is that it's fuel rich. Okay. So that's kind of a good distinction to make is when we say rich, what do we usually mean? We usually mean that the bike is fuel rich. It could be oil rich, but in this, in this case, we're going to, we're going to be talking about how it's fuel rich and that's it's fuel rich. That's the reason why it's got oil running down the pipe is because down the silencer is because it's fuel rich and we want to correct for that. I want to correct for a dry mouth by getting a drink. So where are, where are we on my thing here? Okay. So we're in our carburetor, we're tuning for density altitude. Um, and that is affected by temperature and, uh, pressure, which is elevation, right? So those two things we have to worry about. So that means as it gets hotter, um, in, in the summertime, your bike is going to run, it's going to run rich because th there's going to be less air inside that carburetor, less air pressure pushing inside that carburetor, but it'll still have the same amount of fuel and oil, you know, cause it's all mixed now. And so you're going to be, you're going to be fuel rich in that environment. So let's talk about the three different things inside of our carburetor, inside of our carburetor, the three different dials that we can pull on, if you will, in order to tune, uh, this problem, either tune fuel out or add fuel back in because you know, we may have to do both to, depending on the environment. Okay. So we've got the first thing, and I'm just going to talk in general terms. We've got a pilot circuit, which has a, which has the pilot jet or the idle jet. It could be the idle circuit. It could be the pilot circuit. It's kind of a synonymous interchangeable names. I'm going to use them interchangeably here. Um, that is from your throttle closed, which means idle all the way up to somewhere around one eighth to one quarter throttle. And the, you know, the lines get blurred somewhat in here, but it's just think generally the pilot circuit or the idle circuit is your bike, how it acts, how the carburetor acts, how things interact when the throttle is closed up to one eighth to one quarter throttle somewhere in there. Okay. And we have an air screw that we can, we can fine tune at least on a, on a two stroke, it's an air screw on a four stroke. It's a fuel screw they work inversely. They do the opposite thing. They accomplish the same principle, but they do it in opposite fashions. I'm mostly going to be talking about the two stroke air screw. Um, then the next thing up that we have to tune in that three step thing would be our needle circuit or our needle jet, uh, depending on what your terminology is. This is going to affect our throttle response from somewhere around, you know, one eighth to one quarter throttle clear all the way up until three quarters throttle. This is where it's at. This is the, where all the money is made, in my opinion, with the type of riding that I do, because it's covering the widest amount of throttle position, throttle range. Think about it. Most of the time you're riding your bike, you're probably somewhere around one quarter to one half throttle 
certainly you'd be in that one quarter to three quarter throttle most of the time. And that's the needle. So we're going to talk about that a lot. And then lastly, we would have our main circuit. And again, I wish it wasn't called the main circuit because the main circuit is really only affecting you at three quarters throttle and up. I mean, yes, you can make, you can, de- because the, like I said, the lines are blurred here and you can definitely make the argument and you would be right that mathematically the main circuit is going to be affecting throttle position below that three quarter line. You could say that you begin to start to see it at half throttle. You begin to start to see the effects of it a little bit at half throttle and up. But for the most part, if we're just speaking generally, your quote main jet or main metering circuit on a dirt bike is really only coming into a play fully into its own when we're talking at three quarter throttle and up. Okay. So let's go back to the first one, our pilot circuit or our idle circuit. So we, as we, to recap, this is just happening at the first part of our, our throttle from closed, um, all the way up to maybe one eighth, one quarter throttle. We have an air screw on this two-stroke carburetor that allows us to tune that. So, you what you what you should be doing is you should pull this out, and I, I'll get this. I'll get to this in just a minute uh, as we talk about maybe how to tune or some of the steps that you might go through to do this to to tune your bike. But on the pilot circuit, you do have that air screw there to in order to fine tune. So, it, and it would be good for you to know exactly where your air screw is. Uh, set right now. So go, go to your bike, go to your carburetor and make a note of where it's going to be a flat blade screw on the outside of the carburetor on the left-hand side of the carburetor, go there and see where it is and then count how far, how many turns it is into where it's bottomed out. A typical, typically the acceptable ranges for these things is about three quarters of a turn out to two and a half turns out. That's a fine range to be in. If you have to, and I've got notes for this because the, the, this is hard sometimes for me to remember. If you, so I'm look, I'm reading this in my notes. If you have to run the bike at less than three quarters of a turn out, that denotes that you would need to run a bigger pilot jet, a pilot jet with a taller number, which we'll talk about in just a second or a bigger number. Um, also, if you need to run the pilot, the air screw at more than two and a half turns out, that means you need to run a smaller jet to restrict fuel, okay? Um, and then just speaking generally about our needle circuit, again, this is where I love this one. Uh, it's also awesome because you use, it can be fine-tuned. The first two of these circuits, the pilot circuit and the needle circuit can be fine-tuned, whereas the main circuit, it isn't as much where you're fine-tuning it on a typical you know, uh, dirt bike carburetor. Uh, so on that needle circuit, it's this big needle inside of there that's going up and that's going up and down inside the carburetor. The needle is actually attached directly. This is the cool thing about it. And this is the one, this is the way that I remember it really, really affects me more than the other ones is it's tied to my throttle. It is the one thing that is tied because your throttle cable, your throttle is attached to a cable. The cable is attached. It goes in the top of the carburetor. It's attached to the throttle slide. And guess what is also attached to the throttle slide? Bam. You guessed it. It's the needle. So the needle is directly connected to my hand and it makes the most impact on my riding. That's one of the ways I look at it. It, uh, as as the needle gets, uh, sharper and sharper down to the point and it gets fatter and fatter as it goes up that thing. Um, and so one of the ways that we can tune this is why it's got a clip on it up on the top of the needle. It has all these little notches, these little nine, these little lines. If we move the clip up on the needle, it allows the needle then to drop down further inside the carburetor, which restricts fuel, means it makes it fuel leaner. So one of the easy ways that you can, quote, lean your bike, and you will have a much bigger effect by doing this than changing your main jet, is just by taking the clip on your needle, take your carburetor, take the top of the carburetor off, um, and then pull that needle out, and then raise the knee, raise the clip up, move the clip up closer to the top of that needle that will allow the, the needle to drop further down in the carburetor and it'll restrict fuel. So obviously if you move the clip down, we're doing the opposite thing. If you move the clip down, I'm pointing uh, the people watching this on YouTube are going to be laughing. If you, move, if you move the, if you move the needle, the clip down, that will keep the needle higher inside the carburetor that will allow more fuel to come in. So it will become, it'll, that gives you more fuel, AKA rich, more rich. 
And then your main your main jet is that one jet down there that has probably a number anywhere from 150 to 200, whatever, just depending on what it is. Um, and you can change that as well. Okay, so let's talk about how we... That, those are the basics there. Let's talk about how we tune, okay? How to tune. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a mechanic. I'm just an enthusiast. So these are, the, these are some of the things, these are some of the principles that I use to help me tune carburetors, and it's worked out pretty well so far. So uh, number one way you can tune a carburetor or you can just kind of get an idea of what it's doing is run the bike and get it hot, run it for 10, 15 minutes, and then shut it off and pull the spark plug. So you'll get a lot of people that'll tell you, you can tell everything you need to know about looking at the spark plug. And I agree that you can learn a lot by looking at the spark plug, but I don't think you can, I don't, I don't believe that you learn everything you need to know by looking at the spark plug, but I mentioned it here because it is an important thing. So you pull that spark plug out after, and don't pull the spark plug out after you've kicked the bike a million times and it never started because then the bike is, gonna, the, the plug is going to be wet and you won't get an accurate reading of it. So the bike needs to have been started, got all the way up to operating temperature, run it around, um, and then shut it off and then pull that spark plug out. If the spark plug is, looks black, uh, or, you know, it's, it's wet, it's just super dark. That means it's too cold, which typically means you're running too much fuel in the bike. It's too quote fuel rich because it's not, it's getting too much fuel. It's not able to get, things aren't burning properly. It's not getting hot enough inside that cylinder. Um, and so it's, it looks black on the top of that plug. On the other side of the spectrum is the plug could be white. If the tip of the plug and everything on the front of that plug is white inside, when you pull it out, then that means things are getting really, really hot inside of here, probably too hot, which would be an indication that the bike is running fuel lean. So you might want to take um, and add some fuel in that case. What you're wanting is some sort of a golden brown. And since this is a podcast, um, you're going to have to imagine what golden brown is. I'm thinking about, you know, that perfect, perfectly uh, roasted s'more from the fire. You know, the ones that I make, not the ones your kid makes. The ones your kids make are black. And those ones, you know, that's that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a golden brown color here. Uh, just Google like spark plug colors, and you'll see you'll see the whole range, and you'll begin to get an idea of what you're looking for. Um, so that's one of the ways to look and tune and see if we've got too much fuel, too little fuel, or whatever. The better way, I mean, not the better, but at least the way that I rely on more often than anything is by riding the bike and getting a feel for what's happening and seeing what's happening here. Okay, so again, I want. To mention that you've got to get the bike hot. Do not be tuning your carburetor. Don't just start the bike up and run it for one minute and then be like, oh, look, it's bogging here. So, okay, I need to now go do this thing. Don't do that. You will be chasing your tail. These bikes need to get hot. Everything, ha everything will work the best when the bike is hot, when the carburetor is, the motor is hot, all the way up to operating temperature. You're not going to get a consistent tune. You're not going to know anything that's going on until you get this thing up to operating temperature. So go ahead and do that. I'm talking at least 10 minutes. When I'm tuning a bike, I put my riding boots on. I put my helmet on because you you're not going to know unless you get the thing hot. So I do that. Um, but even be, even before that, I, I should back up a little bit. I'll tear the carburetor apart and find out what I have, or maybe, maybe I won't, maybe I'll get it all the way up to operating temperature, you know, get everything going and like, see, is it bogging here? Is it running too rich? Is it got fuel? Has it got fuel coming out of the pipe or coming out of the, the silencer? Is there no fuel coming out of the silencer or no oil coming out of the silencer? I'm looking to see how it runs. Is there a problem? Is it, it kind of like hesitating? Is it falling on itself? Is it blubbering? Is it pinging? Is it whatever? Okay. And then I'm going to come back to my shop and I'm going to take that carburetor off the bike. I'm going to pull it completely apart. I'm going to see what's in it. What idle jet is in it? What needle is in it? What's the number? What, what are the numbers on these things? What's the number of the main jet? What clip position is it in? Okay. Now I'm going to look and find a jetting chart for that carburetor and that bike. Now, KTM has some really, really good jetting charts in the back of their manuals. If you're running a Honda, a Yamaha, Suzuki, some of these ones are harder to find jetting charts for them. So one trick you can do 
is if it's like, because a lot of these carburetors are pretty similar. Let's say you have a YZ250 and it's got a Keehan Air Striker carburetor or something like that. And the uh, the best thing you can find is like a carb is like a jetting chart for a KTM 250 that has the same carburetor. You could use that as a reference, which I have done a ton, uh, and use that as a baseline. So then, what I try to do is I try to find, um, I try to buy jets that are going in jets and needles that are going in the direction that I need. Here in Utah, I'm running my house is over you know five thousand it's five thousand feet ish. Um, and a lot of the riding that I'm doing is between 6,000 and 8,000 feet. And so I am always taking fuel away. When I buy the bikes, they're jetted for sea level, maybe up to say around 1,500, 2,000 feet ish is kind of what they, what they jet them for a lot of times. So I'm always leaning my bikes out and taking fuel away. So I will look at that jetting chart and I'll say, Hey, look, I need to some leaner I need a leaner, a, a couple steps leaner on the main. I need probably a couple steps leaner on the needle. And I'll look and figure out what those needles are. And then I'll just, just, just go buy them. I go buy them from Rocky Mountain ATV. I look up in the, in like the OEM parts finder for that bike. Maybe it's a 2015 KTM 300. Um, you can actually find right in the, right in the, the OEM parts finder schematics for these things on Rocky Mountain ATV. And then you just say, this is the needle that I want. You figure out what needle that is. You might have to do a do a little, you know, Google searching, whatever. Figure out it's NWC three needle or whatever. I go buy that needle. Maybe I go buy two needles, one that's lean and one that's one step even leaner than that. And then same thing would happen with my idle jet. Maybe I'll and a lot of times in the kit you'll have an idle jet that's one step leaner. And then in your kit that you bought with the bike, and maybe you bought the bike used, and so you don't get any of this stuff. The point is. You're going to start building your own repertoire of jets and needles, idle jets, uh, main jets, needles. You're going to be building this thing out and you're going to make your own little jetting chart here. Okay. And in my case, I'm starting with, I'm starting with the, the, I'm starting by taking fuel away. Now, first thing I'm going to start doing is test is start working on my idle jet. Does it idle? Will it even idle? And we can, we can play around with our, our air screw on that to get the idle to clean up and get it to come off idle. Okay. Um, and one of the ways that you can do that is you can just, um, get the bike hot, like I mentioned, and then get it real hot. And then you can kind of like smack the throttle, like you get the bike hot on the stand and then just like, boom, blip the throttle all the way open. If the bike kind of hesitates or coughs, then, you know, if it's bogging, generally bogging is a sign that it's running, um, a little bit fuel lean. Okay. So I'm kind of starting with that idle jet and building from there. Um, and I will try to make it run as smoothly as possible. A lot of times I don't have to change my idle jet. I'll just change my air screw like fine tune on the air screw and tune that into a spot where it seems to be okay. All right. So, and, and the more that you do this, the better you get a feel for it. And that's the other thing, guys, is you can't really learn fully how to tune a bike by listening to a podcast or by reading an article. You're going to have to go out there and do it. This is going to be this is going to be like, you know, a lab in your biology class in high school. They there was a reason why the teacher made you dissect that frog in high school. It's because there's just certain things that you're not going to learn without getting hands on. And that's the same thing here. And I'm still learning about this jetting thing. I'm still learning each time I do it. And every time I play around with them, and sometimes you can feel like you're lost, but if you make records of what you're doing, maybe it's on a whiteboard. I do that on my whiteboard. I'll be like, Hey, I, I started with this. I changed this setting. I went out and wrote it. How did it change? Then I'll change again. Maybe keep going in the same direction. Did it, did, did the bike get better or worse? Did it bog more or less? And I keep going into, I'm like, okay, now I'm going the wrong direction. I got to go back the other way. So I will systematically, you know, start playing around with that. So that's our, that's on our idle jet. We're going to use our air screw to tune that now on the needle. I'm typically going two needle, two needles leaner than what the bike had in it initially. So if I go two needles leaner at about, you know, cause I'm trying to tune the bike for 6,000, 7,000 feet, usually two needles leaner is going to give me a good starting position. And then I'll put my clip position on three, like right in the middle on the third clip position. I'll put that in the bike and I'll go out there and get the bike hot, see how it runs there. 
Does it feel like it's bogging? Do I feel like I need to add a little fuel? Is it pinging? If it's pinging or making like a weird sound, like a detonating sound, you know you're too, you're too lean and, and you want to you add some fuel there. If it's bogging, you know you're at, you, you, well, you don't always know. It, bogging could be a fuel rich and a fuel lean thing. So this is where, this is where it's going to take some, some critical thinking like what's in the bike? What should be in the bike? What's it reacting to now? Is it hotter than, than normal? Is it colder than normal? And you can start, it's almost like I, I can't teach you how to do it. You have to go out there. But if you spend time looking at those charts and then put these things in the bike and then go ride the bike and then go see what it does, you begin to develop a sense of when the bike is running the best, you can start to hear it. You can start to feel it. And that's, and that's what I'm looking for. So we're either going to be changing that clip up or down. We're either going to be, you know, drop. If we raise the clip up, it'll drop the needle down. That's going to be taking fuel away. The bike will start to run. It could maybe start to run better and better and better up to a certain point, and then it'll run worse. And then you go back the other direction. That's what I do uh, quite a bit. So I'm I'm typically using that, um, you know, my needle two clips or two needles leaner than normal. And then with my main jet, this is the one that is also, you know, important, but maybe not as important as the, is our needle. I will be going, you know, several steps leaner on that thing because I'm not ripping out there, you know, pinned all the time. Um, and so I will then start taking fuel away on that main. Uh, if it started with a 168 at my altitude, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there Then I might go down to a 158 or a 160 for sure, you know, so the smaller the number, uh, the less fuel that they're letting through. And that can, that goes the same thing on the idle jets as it does on the main jets. The needles are typically letters and numbers together. And so they're a little bit harder to decipher, but if it's got a 160, a 160 is going to be less fuel than a 165 and a 165 is going to be less fuel than a 170. Same thing happens on the idle jets. A 38 is more fuel than a 36, you know? And a 45 is more fuel than a 40. So you just kind of go there. And this gets easier and easier as you go. The harder part, sorry, got something in my mouth here. The harder part is if you don't know what's in the bike and you don't even have a starting point. So, and this happens typically when you buy a bike, especially if you buy a bike in a different market, you have no, like a used bike, you have no idea what's in the bike. And that can be a little bit more challenging. For me, usually it's just, I know the bike is going to be jetted for sea level and I'm going to remove fuel from it. And so it's typically, typically a little bit easier for me because I can just slowly remove fuel, slowly lean that thing out until the thing starts to run great. And then I know if it's starting to run pingy or detonate or whatever, I've taken too much and then I add some fuel back in, you know, and so it's a, it's a balancing act that you're doing. Um, but that, that's kind of the, that's, that's what I had in my outline today. Just, you know, fuel oil ratios, um, and fuel air, air, air ratios. People get confused about this stuff, but what we, I think the best thing to do is to pick an, a fuel oil ratio and just run with that. So pick whatever it is, pick clots at 50 to one, whatever, whatever it is. And oil dominator 50 to one motor X cross power two T 65 to one, pick that oil, pick that ratio and just run with that. Okay. Once you've got that, and you're consistent on that one, then we can start to tune these problems out inside the carburetor by tuning how much fuel is going in there. We don't get to say how much air is going in because that's dictated by our density altitude, AKA our elevation and our temperature. But we get to control the amount of fuel that's going in there by those three different upper, three different levers we're pulling in the carburetor. Number one is going to be our idle jet. Idle circuit number two is going to be our needle circuit, needle jet. Number three is going to be our main jet. And we have some fine tuning levers that we can pull in both of those, in all three of those locations to help make that happen. I hope everyone learned something on this. Um, it's it's one of those things you got to just do it. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. I'm certainly not an expert, um, but I have learned a few things here and even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. And that's kind of how I feel about, about me and my riding on that thing. 
Everybody, if you want to support this podcast, if you want to support Dirt Bike Channel on YouTube, you can go to Rocky Mountain, or you can go to my website, rather, and use my links for companies like Rocky Mountain ATV and Motorsport and Amazon. Uh, they are always in the in the description of my YouTube videos, at least usually they are. Um, and you can usually find those links in the signature of any of my emails. So if I'm emailing you, I'll respond back, and, and one of those Rocky Mountain ATV links is going to be in the signature of my email. That really, really helps me. I get a small referral bonus every time you use one of those links. So click on that link and then shop as normal, and that's that will help me out a ton. So um, if you have questions specifically about jetting or whatever, send me an email. Kyle at Dirt Bike Channel. If you have a question about anything related to dirt, bike ch dirt bikes, I may not be able to answer it, but I will do my best. Um, so send me an email. Kyle at DirtBikeChannel.com. I think that's it. That's what I have for you guys today. So hopefully um, everyone is happy and healthy and having a good time. And you know what to do. Leave a single track. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>